Well, hello. Welcome to One Man's Faith today. My name is Neil Owen, as you can see there on the screen, and I am so glad to be here. Uh, I'm, well, y'all may not know this, but last week was uh, taped earlier because uh, my wife and I uh, went out of country. We went, well, kind of. Well, I guess it went out of the country. We, we went to Hawaii, and it was great. It was great. We went to a, a, a national convention for, for, for my denom denomination and then stayed a couple extra days. Wow! Man, that is, that was one of the few times in which I didn't want to come back home. You know, it, it's, just, it's just so neat. It's so different over there. And, and we got to hear some of the... Uh, of the background of the history of Hawaii. Do you realize that Hawaiians are not Asian? They're actually Polynesian. They, Hawaii was populated, and I guess you could say founded by tribes, some tribe members that came out of Tahiti, which is 2,500 miles south of Hawaii. And that's who came and populated Hawaii. And so it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's kind of a different culture. Also, at one point in time, Hawaii was, I believe the figure was 98% Christian. This was back in, uh, I think, the 1800s, maybe 1700s. But it was, it was the most Christian nation in the world at the time that that happened. It's just, it was just so interesting to hear some of the, hear some of the culture. Um, unfortunately, the world kind of crept in, and uh, when the um, missionaries came and brought the Bibles, it also oh, kind of opened the door for those that were kind of greedy to come in and kind of change things and, and took away the, the, uh, the uniqueness of Hawaii when they, when they came in for, for the plantations and all. But, I, you know, I just thought it is, it is great. One of the neat things was my wife and I got to snorkel one day. And, you know, you're going along and you don't see, you know, from the top of the water, you don't see anything. It's not until you get in the water and put the mask in that you start to see what's under the water. And uh, we were in like a 20 foot, 20 foot deep area over a coral reef. And when you, when you look down in under the water, you got this uh, view that was magnificent. I mean, the fish were all brilliant, vibrant colors. Some were, some of them were yellow. Saw a couple that looked kind of like uh, angel angel fish, you know, with the black and uh, yellow stripes. Some were pure black, but had like a silver lining around them. It, you know, it was it was it was just spectacular. And we didn't, you know, we didn't, we were in an area that saw a lot of fish, but the fish that we did see, it was neat. Now, let me apply that. Because as long as we do not put on our spiritual glasses and look at the world through those spiritual glasses, we miss and we do not see the beauty of the glory of God behind those goggles. You see, what you see, in essence, is not real. It's not the real real. Okay, sure, it's real. Sure, if you get hurt or anything, it's real. But what is really real, you don't see. And that's the spiritual world behind the surface of the water. And that's something that, that we need to strive for, to be able to see and know. There are things going on around you, both good and bad, that you're not able to see. And that's the real world. One of my uh, 
favorite movies is The Matrix. Because in The Matrix, Neo is given the choice to come out of the fake world he's in. When The Matrix starts, he's living actually as, what a, how do I want to call it? it uh, he's in a, kind of an embryonic state in a large computer. And that computer uh, sets up everything that he does and sees and hears. And, but at one point, he's given the opportunity to come out of it. He's, he's given the opportunity to take one of two pills. I think the red pill would have kept him in the computer, but if he took the green pill, it would have, it would have in a sense, aborted him, just spewed him out. And so he took it, and he got to see the real world. Well, that's what happens with us. We're caught up in the physical world and miss the spiritual world, which is the real world. Because you and I are spirits living in a spacesuit. And when we transfer over to the other side, i.e. through death, then we enter into the real world because in that world, you live forever. Now, you either live in a dead state in hell, tormented forever, or you live in eternal life because of what Jesus did for us forever with God. Those are the two choices. You can take the red pill and you can stay in this world and not know who Jesus is, not accept him as your Lord, not walk with him. And the word of God says that you will live in eternal hell after you die. Or you can take the green pill, accept Jesus as Lord, let him be Lord of your life, and walk with him forever after you transfer out and over to the other side. The choice is yours. It's always yours. You have until you take your last breath. And once you take the last breath, the choice is over. Your fate is then set. But you have until that point. The caveat is, you don't know when you're going to take that last breath. You have no guarantee in the next five minutes that you'll be alive. So it's always good to be ready. And I want to encourage you. God has more for you than you could ever imagine. Don't throw it away. Don't throw it away. I can't make you. Nobody can make you. God will not make you. He wants you to accept him and accept his son as Lord, but he will not force you. That is totally up to you. You've been told over and over again, you're being told again right now, that if you will accept Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And all it takes is for you to cry out and say, God, forgive me. I've, I've thrown you off to the side. Lord, forgive me for that. Lord, I, I make you Lord of my life. Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. And I believe that you are a living king. That's why it says if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, because we don't, we don't celebrate and worship a dead Jew. We celebrate and worship the risen king, God's only son. And if you will say that, then the Bible says, Romans 10, 9, and, uh, 10, 8, and 9, or I think 10, 9, you will be saved. And God has so much. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I've come to bring life more abundantly. The word life is mortal life. It's not immortal life forever, ever. He says, I've come that your life here on earth will be more abundant than you could ever imagine. God says, if you will follow me, I will give you the desires of your heart. And you have desires on your heart. And God said, I'll give you those desires. 
He says that he will supply all your riches according to his, or he will supply all your needs, excuse me, according to his riches and glory. So I just, I just, I want to throw it out as we start. Do you want to live just in this physical world, world, or do you want to know more about and live in the real world? That's totally up to you. You have that choice. And I, I, you know, I just have to stress, do not throw it away because you don't know when your time is coming. And I'm not trying to frighten you or scare you. I'm just, I'm just stating a fact. We don't know when it's going to occur. So, Father, I pray for those that are watching. Lord, touch them. Holy Spirit, go out. Enter into these rooms that have this TV on and touch those lives. Lord, I pray for healing among those that are watching. I pray for deliverance. I pray for deliverance from addictions and habits that are binding them. In the name of Jesus, I command those addictions to be broke. And Lord, go in. Bring healing, peace, salvation, deliverance, comfort to those. And I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. And we just praise your name today. And I just give you honor and glory. How great you are, Lord. How great you are. Thank you, Father. And I just pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're about ready to get started. Uh, get your Bibles. And let's turn to Colossians chapter 4. And when I come back from break, we'll jump into those, uh, to those first uh, six uh, verses there uh, in Colossians chapter 4. So grab a cup of coffee, your Bible, Colossians 4, and I'll be right back. 